Good morning, good morning, family. Welcome, welcome. Welcome as you're coming in. Thank you so much for joining me again yet this morning. Welcome to the protocol breaking prayer altar. Uh, we're going to start praying any moment. Um, and we're going to go into the word first. Good morning, everybody. As you're coming in, please announce the countries you are tuning in from. Where are you tuning in from? Let's get sharing. Let's get tapping. Let's make sure we invite more people. Let each person at least invite 10 people. Let's get going. Hallelujah. I'm excited. It's the start of the week. That means it's the start of something new and some, something glorious in our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. I hope those on uh, Facebook are able to see me. Hallelujah. I will just get something to elevate just now. Hallelujah. So that I can see your comments more clearly. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody on Facebook, everybody on YouTube, kindly do likewise. Let's share the live broadcast. Let's know where you are tuning in from. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're welcome in this place. Hello, Mpumalanga. Hello, Ghana. Hello, Zimbabwe. Hello, Martin. Hello from the USA. God bless you, Uganda. Hallelujah. It's going to be a glorious day. Zambia is in the house. I see you. South Africa is in the house. Very quickly, we're going to talk about um, the profiting of pressure. Hallelujah. We're going to be looking at pressure this morning, and we're going to pray along. The word in my spirit this morning is, I will not break. Hallelujah. I will will not break hallelujah glory to the living god let's get sharing hallelujah i will not break hallelujah hallelujah are we ready ethiopia island are we ready god bless you hallelujah somebody as you are typing in if you've introduced us to um the country that you're coming from let us know that you will not break hallelujah i will not break hallelujah Hallelujah. We're waiting for those on Facebook to warm up and we're waiting for those on YouTube to catch up. But I know TikTok is always fired up and they are going. God bless you, my darling. Thank you so much, Mr. Security Guard from the U.S. Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad is here. Nigeria is here. Good morning, King Emmanuel. God bless you, Unista. Thank you so much. Now let's announce to everybody who has just joined in into the broadcast and type in the comment section, I will not break. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto us this morning. We will not break. We shall not break. There are many things that are contending for our attention. There are many things that try to break us. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But this morning, we want to announce to the world, and we want to announce in the spirit realm that we will not break. Whatever the devil is trying and intending for us to do in terms of breaking season, we are declaring this morning that we will not break. Hallelujah. As we start on this week, we have been declaring into the month we have been declaring into the month of july and we are fired up into our month of perfection talk to me somebody i will not break if you are not that person we will see you not typing i will not break hallelujah but i know that there are things that are contending for your attention and things that are trying to break you down things like illness things like being weary some people are contending with holiness and they are feeling broken because they feel like they cannot match up to the standard talk to me somebody and some people are going through divorce and they're feeling like they're on the breaking point. But I'm here to announce this morning that God has sent me with a word to tell you, you will not break in this season. You will not crush under pressure. You will not fall under pressure, but you will not break. Hallelujah. That is why I'm encouraging you to declare it with me this morning. I will not break. Hallelujah. Whether I'm going through a divorce, whether I'm going through a difficult pregnancy, whether I'm going through some complication or the other that is trying to exalt itself above the authority of God. And I'm announcing to that each situation that I will not break. Talk to me, somebody. I will not break. And uh, yes, some people are on retirement and they are looking at their savings and saying, my savings plan is not meeting up because I feel like, Pastor, I'm not going to make it until I'm not going to be able to provide for myself. But the Lord has sent me this morning to tell you, you will not break. Come on, somebody. Thank you so much, Facebook. I see you there. Hallelujah. Some people have gone through the death of a loved one and they are feeling 
feeling like they are breaking. Hallelujah. They are feeling like their world is shattered. But I want somebody to announce in the comment section and say, I will not break. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody has been going through a breakup in their relationship and they did not think that the person that they were with, is, it was supposed to be a forever, but it's no longer a forever. And I want you to announce to that person and say, I will not break. They might not be next to you right now, but maybe you are looking at their name. Their name is flashing in your eyes. I want you to tell them, I will not break. Hallelujah. This thing will not break me because Jesus came to mend the broken heart and talk to me, somebody. Somebody's looking at their finances and saying, oh my God. If there was a definition of a mess, that would be my bank account. If there was a definition of my mess, that would be my uh, uh, returned debit orders. If there was a definition of a mess, which is all my policies that have been cancelled. If there was a definition of a mess, is my car that was in a crash last week or the, a crash that I, I was in yesterday and everything was written off. If there's a definition of a mess that is trying to break me, Pastor, that I'm receiving notices that they're going to uh, uh, repossess my car, they're going to repossess my house. Somebody come on shout it out loud. I want you to take it out of your system and I want you to tell that mountain and you tell it, I will not break. I'm not going to break at that letter. I'm not going to break at whatever rejection that has been thrown my way. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody needs to announce to unemployment and saying, I will not break. In fact, God is going to rebuild me. God is going to give me something better. If I lost my job, I'm going to get something better than where I'm coming from, where I will be celebrated and not tolerated. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, TikTok. Come on, TikTok. I need you come on all of you everybody invite at least two to five people at least hallelujah and you'll be tapping on that screen and you make sure that you declare with me remember this is a dual issue when two or three are together they stand in agreement and god is in our midst to hear our prayers this morning god is in our midst to take our declarations and bring them into effect talk to me somebody somebody is saying i need i need the support today i need that word of encouragement today i need to declare i need to prophesy to the situation it looks like i have to relocate cities. It looks like I may have to relocate countries because I see I'm under attack. I'm under some kind of spiritual attack where I am. I'm under attack from my village and it looks like I need to move. If I'm to make it past the fortune, I need to move. All I know is that I will not break. I will move if I have to. If I have to leave this abusive relationship, I'll move. If I have to, somebody shout it again. I will not break. I cannot break. I shall not break. I is impossible for me to break. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody is looking at the situation situation in their life and they are seeing their children misbehave. They are seeing their children behave like rascals. They are behaving like rebellions and you are saying I don't know this. I've never seen this. This is not how I treated my parents. This is not how I've never disrespected my parents. This is not how I talk to my parents. Come on somebody. I need you to look at those children and whether you are looking at their pictures, maybe they are not next to you. You need to announce to them and say I will not break. Hallelujah. You're not going to break me. God did not create me for a breaker. I'm not a breakable item. Hallelujah. I am sensitive like that, but I'm not going to break because God is sending me reinforcement this morning. The word that is coming this morning to me is a word that's going to build me and that's going to re reassure me. And it's a word that's going to remind me who I am in Christ and whose I am, that I'm protected and, and that I am empowered to deal with any situation that the devil sends my way. Somebody confess it again and say, I will not break in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. You need to start this week with a determination and an assertiveness that you will not break. Whoever has been trying to poke you at work, somebody who's been trying to poke your nerves, you need to announce to yourself as you're going to look at the mirror before you step out. You say, I will not break. Some of you are in the workplace right now and somebody has annoyed you just an hour ago, just 30 minutes ago, somebody annoyed you and you feel like breaking down. I want to tell you, you do not have permission to break down. If you are part of this family of the protocol breaking prayer out altar, you are not allowed to break down. In case you want to cry, you will cry when you get home in your own closet. Hallelujah. You will cry unto your God. Hallelujah. Because there is no time. Sometimes we want to cry to the wrong people. You want to cry to your friends. Sometimes you want to cry to the colleagues that are around you. But I want to tell you, sometimes those colleagues are the very backstabbers. So you go into that bathroom or that toilet at that workplace and you cry and you wipe your eyes and you put on your makeup again and you walk up without, with your head standing tall and you say, I will not break. Hallelujah. You tell yourself, I will not break. They must not see your tears 
tears. Hallelujah. Don't allow the enemy to, to, to rejoice. Hallelujah. I will not break. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody's marriage is falling apart. Do you understand how blessed you are that God woke you up this morning? The fact that you woke up next to your husband or your wife and you cuddled and you kissed this morning. Somebody does not have that. Somebody woke up to a noisy household. Somebody woke up to somebody telling them you need to pack your bags and go back to your family. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody needs to celebrate the sanctity of marriage. Somebody needs to say thank you. So I know sometimes we, when we go through challenges, we think that we are the worst going through the challenges, but you don't know what your neighbor is going through right now. So I want you to celebrate yourself and you tell yourself, I will not break. And as you are doing that, you are tagging somebody in the comment section and you tell them that they will not break. Tell them, so and so, you will not break. Fortune, you will not break. Gloria, you will not break. You are not permitted to break. Come on, somebody. Whoever is trying to bring you down, are they your God? You will not break. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I want to announce somebody that is saying, oh, pastor, my car is not repairable. I don't even know how I'm going to fix it. I don't know where I'm going to get the money. Somebody needs to shout and say, I will not break. I feel it in my spirit right now. I feel it. It's welling up inside of me. The Lord is confirming it inside of me right now. I will not break. I know I'm speaking to somebody right now. You are being charged up in your spirit. You know that you will not break. You need to understand that the point where you reach your breaking point, that is your breakthrough point. Come on, somebody. I just said something there. Facebook, I said your breaking point is your breakthrough point. Your breaking point is your breakthrough point. Somebody on TikTok, help me type that because I know you guys know how to testify on that comment section. Faster. Say it again. Say, tell your neighbor, my breaking point is my breakthrough point. Therefore, Pastor Fortune, as you have brought this word to me this morning, as the Holy Spirit wants me to know that I will not break. I'm not at the break point, but I'm actually at the breakthrough point. Talk to me somebody hallelujah you will not break whatever loss you have got you have gone through hallelujah i know what it is to lose a parent and you feel like you cannot go on for two years i was stuck in limbo i couldn't do anything i couldn't i, I i'm not talking fiction here i'm not talking theory if you ask those who are around me i couldn't continue i couldn't believe it but then i got to a point where i remembered who raised me where i remembered that my mother raised me to be a strong woman that i should continue i should not give in to the devil i want to encourage that person you lost your dad three years ago i want to tell you that you will not break but you are going to come together you're going to live and he's going to be very proud of it of you he's looking down at you from heaven he's saying he's cheering you on he's saying you will not break come on somebody somebody type it in the comment section and say i will not break snare you will not break come on baby come on baby they try to do everything possible against you at work but i want to tell you that you will not break i know they may look at you and say you are tiny like that in frame, but they don't understand that dynamite comes in small packages. Talk to me, somebody. You're going to explode. You're going to explode breakthrough. Come on, somebody. I will not break. Can somebody confess this with me this morning? Tell somebody, I'm not going to break. I know the illness was sent to break me. Some of these illnesses that the doctors themselves are confused. They keep on wanting to infuse me with medication. Come on, somebody. I need you to tell that diagnosis and you look at that report and say, I will not break. God did not create me with cracks. Therefore, I will not break. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, Shakori Abasunda, you are facing foreclosure. They are, your mortgage is about to be foreclosed right now. Your house is about to be repossessed right now. I want to tell you, you will not break, and you're going to tell those papers that they should shift back. God is not done with you yet. God is not done with me yet. It is not over until God is saying it's over. I will make the necessary adjustments. I will change the strategies where it is necessary. But all I know, all I can testify this morning, is that I will not break. Oh, Jesus, I will not break. My parents may be fighting, but that does not mean it's going to be my testimony and it's my legacy. I might be coming from a broken home. I might be coming from a home where there are alcoholics, but I will not break because I know that is not my legacy. That is not my testimony. That is not my inheritance. I choose to be the best. I choose to be the one who's different. I choose to set a separate template for my children. I choose to be a separate template for, for my siblings to know that even though we were sexually abused, that there is a tomorrow and that tomorrow is hopeful. Somebody 
somebody shout it again one more time and say, I will not break. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, Anything that tries to enlarge, to, to enlarge fear inside of you, they are trying to put fear inside of you. You are seeing all sorts of things that you don't understand. Some people are talking about how bad the world is going. Some people are talking about how bad the economy is. Some people are talking about how witches are more stronger, how wizards are more stronger. I want to tell you that you serve a living God that is stronger than anything else. He is the master creator of the earth and the, everything inside of it, every planet is controlled by him. If it was not for him, everything would not have been in sync for you to wake up this morning. Somebody needs to announce to those witches and wizards, you need to announce to every evil altar that you will not break. In fact, that altar will break before it breaks you. Come on, somebody. Your breaking point is your breakthrough point. Somebody needs to announce it right now. In Jesus' mighty name, you will not be weary. Your illness is going away right now in Jesus' mighty name. It is not, in fact, your illness. You should not even appropriate it and possess it. You will say, I will not break in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody needs to say, that loneliness will have to flee in Jesus' mighty name. I will not be lonely. I will not break. Come on, somebody. Somebody, I know what it is when you have been in a relationship for a long time and you feel like you cannot live without the other person. Not so. Even if you are not married to the person, you are feeling like I'm at a breaking point because this person has told me they are moving out of my life, but the devil is a liar and so is his mother-in-law and all the siblings of the devil. Right now, I will not believe the lies of the devil. You can move out if you want to move out of my life, but uh, one thing I know is that God has not forsaken me and I'm not going to be lonely and I and you are not the only person that exists in this 7 billion uh, uh, people populated world. Somebody is out there for you. Talk to me, somebody. God has got a special person who's going to be better than that person, who's going to treat you better than that person, who's going to provide for you the same way that Christ provided for the church. Talk to me, somebody, and shout it out, out again and say, I will not break. I will not labor in anxiety. Come on, somebody. Why should you be taking anxiety tablet tablets every single day? Your money is being depleted. You want to do so much for yourself. You want to do so much for your children. You want to do so much for the kingdom. You want to do so much for your church, but you cannot even be a blessing because your money is tied up on medicines. It's tied up on anxiety pills. It's tied up on Xanax because you cannot sleep. I declare and I decree that this morning and this evening, as you go to bed, you will have all the calmness that you need, the peace that surpasses all understanding is going to overshadow you and you will not have insomnia at all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody hearing me right now? My breaking point is my breakthrough point in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So those friends who are trying to break you down, they don't have anything positive to talk about you. They don't have anything positive to say to you. Right now, I announce to you, right now, those friends are moving out of your life. Father, detach them from, my, from me right now in Jesus' mighty name. We are not tied by super glue. In fact, there is no glue that can tie you through to friends who are backstabbing you, those who are go gossiping about you. My God, I will not break. Hallelujah. In fact, I'm going to separate myself from those who are trying to break me down. That colleague that is trying to break me down, that is telling me that my report is not good enough. Oh, my God, Sanda. My God, I send your angels into every workplace so that everybody can feel that reassurance, my God, that you woke us up with this morning and that they know that they will not break. Father God, let them move with confidence, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we deal with every backstabber, my God. We hand them over to you. We say, over to you, my dear God. You handle the wrath. You you, you do whatever you want with them in the mighty name of Jesus. Who is that person who sets a trap for you, who says that you will lose your job? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare you are protected. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. You are a child of God, and you will not break. Are you still confessing with me, or you are still thinking about it? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Mm. I come into your domain of a worry kingdom and I want to declare to you that your worries will not break you down in Jesus' mighty name. There is nothing that you will add about the worry. Why should you worry? Do you know that the birds do not worry about what they're going to eat tomorrow, but what they know is that they're going to wake up tomorrow and they will definitely be catered for. So why should you stress you will be catered for? I know that you only ate one meal yesterday, but the fact that you ate one meal is better than the person who did not eat a meal, who's having stomach cramps, sleeping somewhere under a 
a bridge somewhere. I decree and I declare your situation is turning around. You will not break. Is somebody hearing me this morning? I said you will not break. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God, I know those people who are saying I'm fearing death. You are afraid to go out. Some of you have got driver's licenses, but you are afraid to drive. What are you afraid of? The earth is the lowest and the fullness to offer. Do not be afraid of death. You will not break. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Those of you who are going for that interview, there's a lady who's going for an interview today, and I still remember because I've been praying for you right now. I want to tell you, you're not going to break. You're going to be calm. You're going to answer every single question, and you, 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 you're not going to, you're going to shake. You're not, not, not going to shake. Hallelujah. There shall be no shaking in Jesus' mighty name. So everybody who's going for an interview this week, my God, I bless you. I send you with a spirit of confidence that you have never seen before. You will not break. Whatever challenges you may be facing in life, my God, there is a God that can deal with every single one of them. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I will not break. Hallelujah any form of attack that the devil is bringing and trying to make you feel that there is pressure. I want you to know something that you will not break under any form of pressure, but I want to declare to you this morning that you're going to stand on the word of God at all times in Jesus' mighty name. When you stand on the word of God, you do not break. Somebody tell your neighbor, I will stand on the word. <clears throat> the word of God says, keep watch and pray that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So God knew that the flesh might sometimes be weak. But what we need to focus on this morning is to reinforce your spirit. Your spirit must be so violently ready to conquer fear. Hallelujah. That is why he says, keep watch and pray. That is why you stumbled on this broadcast. Some of you who are new on my broadcast, you stay here because I want to tell you, by the time you leave this broadcast, you will not have any fear inside of you. Watch and pray. You will see the reinforcement. Your flesh will no longer be weak in Jesus' mighty name. You will be empowered to conquer your flesh. Whatever your flesh is seeing, whatever your flesh is, is making your flesh to shake, right now I eradicate any form of fear in Jesus' mighty name. I command it to leave you right now in Jesus mighty name I command the fear to leave I know some of you you are looking at your loved one and you're looking at them and saying oh they're looking so frail it looks like they're about to check out there's nobody who knows the checkout season like the God who who made that person so you don't determine when the person is checking out I've seen people come back from the death deathbed of HIV people who was written off and they were told that cancer was going to kill them and they are still standing till today Am I talking to somebody? I know I've got a witness who got a diagnosis and they told you you had six months to live, but still you are here six years later. Who is the God that you serve? Who is the God that created you? I will not break. Tell your neighbor, I will not break. Come on, somebody. You need to contend. Hallelujah. We are reminded throughout the scriptures that we need to contend. Hallelujah. We are reminded that we are called to contend for the faith. Hallelujah. And we are called to contend against the enemy. Somebody needs to fight. You need to contend. Tanya, you need to contend. Kuti, you need to contend. Makodi, you need to contend. Eric, you need to contend. KK, you need to contend. Masiko, I will not break. You will not break. Mam Kathy, you will not break. Commander, you will not break in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody. Eustinia, you will not break. Vimbai, you will not break. Come on, somebody. Brenda, you will not break. When life seems to be getting extremely overwhelming and you can only see what you can perceive ahead of you and you are looking and you only have a bird's eye view, you have a narrow view of what is happening. But the Lord is saying, do not just look at what is ahead of you. He says, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, my God. He says, when you look up to me, you will see the breakthrough that you need. When you look up to me, you will see the blessings that will come down. Talk to me, somebody. What are you looking at? I want you to ask your neighbor, what are you looking at? Talk to me, somebody. When you look unto him, hallelujah, everything might be blurry around you, around you, in front of you, on the side of you, at the back. But when you look unto him, the blurriness goes in Jesus' mighty name. He says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Come on, somebody. If the psalmist had the audacity to look up to the hills, you also look up to the hills because that's exactly where you're coming from. He said you are set for a mountaintop experience. You are going to that mountain. You look unto Jesus because he's the one that is calling you on that mountain. He wants you to shine. He wants to put you up there. Come on, somebody. The Lord is the one who made heaven and earth. He's the one that contro controls everything that is going to happen in your life. He's the one who's holding the remote. Am I communicating to somebody? Somebody shouted at God and said, I will not break. My God, he says, uh, those who are crying to him are those that I will answer. Hallelujah. 
He says the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cries. Do you understand that this is scriptural? That this is prophetically scriptural? That you are going to look up to him and you are going to cry unto Lord. He says that as long as you have the righteousness of God, I look at those, those who are righteous and I can hear their cry. That is the assurance he gives you in the book of Psalms 34. He says, I can hear the eyes. I'm open to their cry. That means I'm open to conversation. I'm open to reasoning with them. I'm open to understand what is making their heart sob. Talk to me, somebody. He says, the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. They cut the, to cut them off from remembrance from the earth. Hallelujah. So those who are doing evil upon you, God is saying he's going to cut them off. Talk to me, somebody. He says, when the righteous cry out and the Lord hears, he delivers them out of all their troubles. Not some of their troubles, but all of their troubles. So this morning, I want to encourage you that in this platform, in this safety platform, I want you to cry out to the Lord. Whatever it is that has been keeping you heavy right now, whatever you woke up with, if you did not experience joy, you cry out to the Lord this morning and you tell the Lord this is what I'm crying out for talk to me somebody the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart so if you are a person who came on this broadcast with a broken heart God is a candidate of mending the broken hearts not the complainers God does not want you to complain God wants you to speak what you want to see he wants you to recreate what you want to see create what you want to see you are a creator after all you are making the image and likeness of God talk to me somebody somebody shout I will not break my God. The Lord is saying, I am their fortune for those who are earnestly seeking me. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my pen souls for the Lord, says the psalmist. Hallelujah. Is your heart panting for the Lord? Is your soul panting for the Lord? Talk to me, somebody. You woke up this morning on this protocol breaking prayer. You said, oh my God, early will I seek you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. I still decide I'm going to seek the Lord. I woke up this morning wanting to seek the Lord. Talk to me, somebody. They that should seek the Lord in hope that they might grope for him and, he, and find him, though, though he is not far from each one of us. That's Acts chapter 17, verse 27. He says he is near to you in Jesus' mighty name. He says, submit yourself to me. Submit everything that you are going through to me. Hallelujah submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you, draw nearer to me, draw nearer to God, he will draw nearer to you, he will cleanse your hands he will cleanse the hands of the sinners, come on somebody, he will purify your hearts, he's a forgiving God, he does not just want you to be double minded, come on somebody God does not need a person who is double minded, so if you came here doubting and you didn't want to put your trust in God, I don't know you can bounce off, but if you want to see God come through for you this morning, if you want to see your breakthrough, break your breaking point, right now I want you to shout I will not break in Jesus mighty name look unto Jesus come on somebody you are going to confess positively from today in this whole week father God anoint my lips anoint my, my, my mouth anoint my tongue let me not speak death hallelujah death and life are in the power of the tongue and those that love it shall eat the fruit of it come on somebody I want to declare and decree to somebody who's listening to the sound of my voice do not make sure make sure that your tongue does not produce the fruit that you don't want hallelujah anything that you say with your mouth I need you to understand the power that you carry that you you are the one who is creating the fruits that you are seeing. If you are seeing something that is not good in your life, you need to go check your tongue. If you need to buy a pot scourer to scrub your tongue, go and do that if necessary. Those of you in, 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 in South Africa, you will understand. If you need sunlight, that green bar sunlight, and, and a, 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 what do you call it? A skir pot. Use a skir pot and, and clean your tongue until you say the right things that align. All things that are positive that you will say in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, I will look unto Jesus. I will look unto Jesus. Those that look unto Jesus, they've got the benefits of peace and the rest of mind inside of them. He says, I will give you peace that surpasses all understanding and in me you will have rest because there's no rest for the wicked. Therefore, you can take a chill pill and relax in the fact that God is giving you rest. Somebody say, I will not break in Jesus' mighty name. He says, those that believe in me, those that are looking up unto me, they don't look at the pressures of life. They don't look at the things that are trying to break them down. I will give them courage in life's battle. Hallelujah. Because life is a battle. It is not a fanfare. But in that battle, I am with them. I am fighting for them. They will not have to fight in those battles in Jesus' mighty name. When you see the enemies that are charging for you in Jesus' mighty name, he says, these Egyptians you will not see anymore. Talk to me, somebody. He says, fortune, remind them. As I said in my book of Deuteronomy, do not be afraid. For the Lord your God is with you. He says, I must remind you again by the spirit of the living God. He's leading me to tell 
tell you that you should not be afraid. He is with you, Martin, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Bima, the Lord says he is with you. You will be radiant. Hallelujah. When they look at you, their face shall not be ashamed. Nozuko, your face shall not be ashamed. Regardless of the challenges you are going through in your family, I declare and I decree right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord give you reinforcement. Nozuko, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Nozuko, may the Lord give you reinforcement. I send to you right now the oil, the oil, the oil, the oil that removes your shame, the oil that will heal your heart, the oil that will heal your heart and remind you who you are. My God, he says, trust in me. I am the God that you are serving. You are not being serving any other man before that person. He says, my salvation is personal unto you, and therefore I have called you. I have known you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I'm the one that will determine your, your, your future and your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hold on to the hands of God. Hold on to his right hand. He's the one that is going to lift you out of that situation. May courage and confidence come to you in Jesus' mighty name. Oh my God, somebody type in that comment section one more time and say, I will not break. I will not break. He says, those fortune that will look up unto me, I will give them protection and security in the times of peril when they are suffering. Hallelujah. He says, remind them of what my word, as I said to prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 43, I said, when you pass through the waters, they will not drown you. I will be with you when you pass through whatever waters, whether it is stormy waters, whether it is raging waters, whether it is a river or it's a dam, whatever it is, it will not harm you. It will not drown you because the Lord says, I am with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will not not over be overflown by these waters come on somebody when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned he says there shall not even be a scorching upon you hallelujah the fire shall not consume you come on somebody i know it feels like you are sitting on hot coals in that marriage i know it feels like they want to make you feel like oh my god kariyama shonda say i will not burn ah kariyama shonda i will not be consumed by whatever fires that are going on around me Thank you, Jesus. Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for that. I know that the Lord is with me. Your rod and staff, they correct me. Hallelujah. Your rod and staff, they comfort me as well. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody needs to understand that the situation you have been going through, the things that you have been going through, it is because you missed the mark. Hallelujah. And the Lord is trying to bring the rod of, of, of correction and is trying to bring you back into alignment. He says, come back to my principles. Come back to walking on the steps that I'm ordering you on. Do not walk on your own ordered steps. Do not all work on the, on the word that you are giving yourself, but work on my word. Therefore, I will bring comfort to you and I will re-nurture you and I will bring you back and I will make sure that as I prepare the table in the presence of your enemies, your enemies will see you and you will not be ashamed. Your enemies will see you. They will celebrate with you because they've got no other option in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God, there is an exuberant type of faith that you need to exude this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ as you confess in that comment section and say, I will not break in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is my light and in is my salvation, says the Psalms of David. Hallelujah. In Psalms 27, he says, he is my light and he is my salvation. That is the only light I choose to focus on. Come on, somebody. Lord, you are my light and my salvation. That means you are my deliverer. Anything that has been trying to kill me, my God, he's my salvation. He's the one that saved me. He's not about to forsake me. Talk to me. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Somebody tell your neighbor, I will not be afraid. I'm not afraid of you. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Somebody needs to share this live broadcast right now and tap on that screen. Come on, somebody. When you are, when, when you are looking unto Jesus, you need to understand that he's going to give you the constant victories that you need. In every battle that you are facing, he says, I'm the constant victory that I'm going to give you. Hallelujah. So as I was with Moses and I will be with you. Hallelujah. In Exodus 14, 13, he says, Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Can I prophesy to somebody that it is you this is me. You are going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. You're going to stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord, Waikai. You're going to stand still, Lisa, and see the salvation of the Lord, Ritabile. You're going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, Sne. You're going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, Tasmin.
Doris, you are going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Dumaiza, you're going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Is somebody resonating with this word this morning? Is somebody hearing the Holy Spirit this morning? Is somebody feeling the heat on them right now? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, somebody's feet, you are very hot right now. The Lord is confirming you are about to take off. Elnet, you are about to see the salvation of the Lord. He will accomplish what you want him to accomplish for you today and beyond. July, somebody saw July is explosive. July is amazing for me in Jesus' mighty name. Busi, you are going to accomplish what you need to accomplish because you are standing still. You are not shaken by whatever is going around you. You are standing still and you will see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians who you saw yesterday, the Egyptians you saw today, you will see no more again. My God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord has woken up you, you has woken you up this morning with new benefits in Jesus' mighty name. Those who are in different countries, and as you're about to go to bed, when you wake up, you're gonna be loaded with new fresh benefits. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Having known all these things, it is important to understand that you need to look unto Jesus because occasionally we lose our mindset and we lose our gaze and we focus on the wrong things and that's when we begin to sink. But we need to understand that when we are looking unto Jesus, we begin to walk on water the same way that Peter walked on water. Hallelujah. So it is necessary that you reach out your hand and say, I'm reaching out to the hand of Jesus and I will not fail. I will not fail in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for these ones that have come on this broadcast. My God. That Lord, as they are hearing your word, as your word is getting forth, my God, that prophetic word is taking root in their spirit and no devil shall steal it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And my God, they will continue to set their gaze on you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, God, contend with my contenders. He's already got your back on that. Hallelujah. You will see the greatness of the Lord in the month of July. You will be perfected in the month of July, Arctic. Ntombi Tosh, you are going to be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. When life gets extremely overwhelming for you, I want to assure you and say to you, look unto Jesus. Don't perceive what you are seeing in your, uh, in, your, in your current, whatever is currently in front of you. Don't panic with whatever is going on inside of you. The Lord says, I'm, I must tell you to put on the armor of God so that you will be able to stand and you stand against all the wiles and the strategies of the devil. Whatever they're trying, they're not going to fail. Whatever strategy, they may try one thing. They tried gossip. They tried to plant the wrong documents inside of you they are in your office. They tried to make as if that you are corrupt, but they're not going to succeed. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Somebody say, I will not break. Come on, somebody. Come on, let's share the broadcast. Share at least with one person or two people, and you tap on that screen. Come on, somebody. Let's populate the kingdom of heaven, and let's depopulate hell. Come on, somebody. Somebody needs this break. Through. Somebody needs to break through. Somebody needs to break forth. Somebody needs to know that they are going to live. They're going to make it. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to know that they don't need to backslide. Somebody needs to know that they don't need to sell their soul. Somebody needs to know that they don't have to sleep their way up, 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 up that ladder of corporate, uh, in, in the corporate world. Somebody needs to know that they are going to get that job without compromising who they are as Christians. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The Lord says, do not rely on your own strength, but rely. God bless those who are giving. Hallelujah. He says, do not rely on yourself. Do not rely on your own strength. Do not rely on your own wisdom. Instead, you rely on God. Because God is the one that raises dead things. So that thing that they threatened you about, that said it's dead, they said your, your life is dead, your, your work is dead or whatever, your job is, is finishing. No, 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 no. We focus on God because he's the one who's able to resurrect that thing. The Lord is able to resurrect our businesses. The Lord is able to resurrect those things that are seemingly dead. I will conceive again. I will dream again. And I will birth out again in the name of Jesus Christ. The apostle Paul says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8 to 9. He says, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we are experiencing in the province of Asia. We are under great pressure as it is right now. But one thing we understand, even though we are under great pressure far beyond our ability because because sometimes this pressure looks like it wants to overwhelm us. He says, so we have despaired in life. We also face despair. Do you understand that the apostles also felt the way that you have been feeling? He says, indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. Because some of these things, it feels like you are dying. You are feeling like, oh my God, is it possible? Can I take more than this? Oh my God, I don't even know what to answer to my children. When they keep on telling me that they need stationery in school. And I know I don't even have 10 rand on me. I don't even have 20 rand. I don't even know how I'm feeling 
feeding them tonight and yet I'm having all these funny letters from school that are telling me they need this and that. Come on, somebody, somebody say, I will not break. This thing will not break me. There is no food in the house. There's no money in the house, but your husband is coming back drunk. It will not break me. You are trying to put it together. You're trying to put your life together. You are trying to remain composed. And your wife comes in at ungodly hours. And you are hearing rumors in the street that he's just busy sleeping around. I will not break. I will not break. Come on, somebody. The Apostle Paul says, this, Indeed, even though we have felt as if like we have received the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but we might rely on the God who raises the dead. It happens so that you can understand that you can only cling to the righteous one. You can only cling to the anointed one who is Christ. You can only cling to the one that makes sense, the one who will not say, you do this for me. He does not bargain. He loves you unconditionally, and he gives you these things unconditionally. You don't have to cling to your uncle. You don't have to cling to a human being who can decide that they can withdraw. Today, they decided that they're going to borrow you money. Tomorrow, they decide that they're withdrawing the money. They are not giving it to you anymore. But we says that we've decided these things we have gone through. It, it, it was so that we understand that we can only rely on God. And it is God that will send us the people who will not dupe us, the people who will not withdraw their help from us. It is the Lord that will send the right destiny help us to us. Oh, my God. I ask you today, what is the situation that you're going through today? What is putting you under such great pressure that you wanted to, do, to quit your faith? My God, my God, I rely on God. I will not break. Yes, Sid, you will not break. In Jesus' mighty name. You will not break. In Jesus' mighty name. Take a moment right now and look unto God. Tell God, my God. I will not suffer anxiety. I am free from stress, in, stress in, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, you are the source of all things. Father, you are the God of all things. You are the source of all things. We will not bow to pressure. We will not bow to anxiety. We will not bow to stress in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare and we decree that in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. With, in him who loves us. Can somebody declare that they are conqueror? Can you declare to the Lord that you are more than a conqueror? You are more than a conqueror. Love more. Love me. You are more than a conqueror. Fele, you are more than a conqueror. Gwen, you are more than a conqueror. Mpote, you are more than a conqueror. Zandile, you are more than a conqueror. Petsy, you are more than a conqueror. Vimbai, Brenda, you are more than a conqueror. Let me see who's on YouTube. You are more than a conqueror. Oh, Jesus. Lorato Masina, you are more than a conqueror. Uchena Collins, you are more than a conqueror. Oh, Jesus. You are more than a conqueror. Oh, Jesus. You are more than a conqueror. Somebody declare to your neighbor, I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. Whatever pressure that I'm feeling, hallelujah. Father, I choose to praise your name today. I choose to tell you you are an awesome God. I choose to thank you. I, I've come this morning, my God. I know that before I have even spoken, my God, you have heard my prayer. I seek solace under you, my God. When I feel like I'm under pressure, I just look unto you. Hallelujah. With man, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, he says, Cast all your cares and anxiety on him because he cares for you. Cast all your cares. Tell him right now, Father, I've come to cast all my cares on you. I've cast, I'm have cast. i casting all my anxiety, anything that tries to make itself an anxiety prayer, prayer point. I'm leaving it up to you. I'm putting it on your doorstep. Hallelujah. You tell him and say, God, I'm feeling consumed right now with everything that is going on around me. Everything that is going around me. In my country, the news are consuming me. I'm feeling overwhelmed. My family, I'm feeling overwhelmed because I don't seem to be enough. It doesn't seem to be enough. I'm feeling overwhelmed because I'm trying to be there for my husband and my husband is breaking down, but he will not break down because I will not break down. I will make sure that my husband doesn't break down. I will make sure that my children don't break down. Talk to me, somebody. I'm feeling overwhelmed, God, because I don't understand what is happening in my relationship because I've invested so much. I've not only have I invested, somebody is here who has taken their, their, their girlfriends to school. You paid and you paid and you paid and you thought you were making an investment and now it looks like you are, you are living with a dragon. 
Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. The Lord is releasing you. It's an ungodly foundation to start with in the first place. You thought you were doing well. Some of the relationships that you have, the friends that you helped, that cannot be there for you, they can't help you right now. I want you to cast the anxiety and give them over to God. Relationships that are cracking. Mm -mm. They can crack, but you will not crack. I will not crack. I will not crack. I subdue everything that is cracking around me. I subdue every person that is cracking around me. I have control and dominion over every single thing that is living on this earth. And those that don't speak, those that speak, I, I subdue you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I have dominion. I have control over my situation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. In fact, the spirit of God dwells inside of you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of God, does, of Christ, does not belong to him. So if I have people who are here in the broadcast who are saying, Pastor Fortune, I know I have the spirit of God inside of me. I'm a spirit being and I dwell in the spirit that the spirit dwells in me. Come on, somebody. I need somebody who's saying, Pastor Fortune, I'm tired. I'm tired. I need the living water to quench my thirst. I'm tired, Pastor Fortune. Is that you, Hoiti? Who is that person? But I will not crack. I will not break. I want you to declare I will not break. Because the spirit of the living God is saying, I'm sending the living waters that will quench your thirst. My God. Somebody needs to tell the Lord and say, Lord, I will help. I will, I will seek you more. Help me to seek you more. Help me not to seek any other options. Help me to seek you more, my father. Relieve me from this mounting pressure. Relieve me from this mounting pressure. My God. I live it all at your feet. I'm leaving all the anxiety at your feet. I'm leaving every mountain at your feet, oh God. Uh -uh. I cannot take it, but I know, God, you are in charge. In the mighty name of Jesus, he says, let your hearts not be troubled. Believe in God and also believe in me. Let your hearts not be troubled. Believe in God, Sylvia. Believe in God. Don't let your heart be troubled, Masiko. Believe in God, Madikelet. Lerato Mashaba, believe in God. Martin, believe in God. My And he says, when you believe in me, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, I will give you peace because I am peace at all times. We are hard pressed on every side, but yet we are not crushed. Karabashata. You may be hard pressed on every side. The Lord says you shall not be crushed, Noma. You shall not be crushed. Your spouse shall not be crushed. Oh Jesus, thank you, Jesus. You are a living God. You will not break. Somebody said, I will not break. I will not break. Simone, you will not break. Everything else may want to fall apart, but you will not fall apart. In the name of Jesus Christ, pressure will not break you. You may be feeling like you are being crushed, but we said, the Bible says we are not perplexed. We are not in despair because we know the greater one lives inside of us. And he said he will not leave us nor forsake us. I may be feeling pressure, but I will not be crushed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You've been feeling that continuous physical exertion of pressure continuously. It's like something is pressing you. It's pressing you. My God, you've been feeling stressful. That stress, like something is urgent. Oh, I need to do. No, 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 no. Leave that stress alone. Mm -mm. Hand it over to Jesus. My God, my God. Too many demands. There's demand. Everything is demanding your attention. The workplace is demanding your attention. Your family is demanding attention. Your friends want your attention. You, are only, you feel like I'm only one person. I cannot stretch myself on all sides. 
You've been feeling the stress. You've been feeling the crushing. You've been feeling the weight and the burden and the tension. And the Lord says, today I lift you out of that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody's already feeling lighter. Who's already feeling lighter right now? My God. His words don't go out in vain. You're already feeling lighter. You're already feeling. You, you just don't, don't have a care in the world. Just hand it over to Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Phil. God bless you. You understand that for a, an olive oil, this olive oil that we, we pray over and we, we say it's anointing oil when we dedicate it and make it our anointing oil, the same olive oil that you cook within the kitchen, for it to become to that point, that olive seed has to be squeezed and oil comes out. Hallelujah. So sometimes in life we feel like we are going through a squeezing. We are feeling like we are being crushed, but it's so that the oil can come out and the oil comes out, it comes on you, it drips on you, you shine. My God, for, for, for palm oil to come out, where does it come out? It, fry, it comes from, from the palm nut. My God. It is the pressure that is on a charcoal that eventually produces a diamond. For a butterfly to become a butterfly, it was a caterpillar before. And because of pressure, it had to come out and become a butterfly. And it becomes that beautiful thing that is expected in Jesus' mighty name. For a rose to come out with that fragrance of a rose, that smell, that fragrance, it comes out because it was a rose. It had to be crushed. And some of us, yes, we've gone that crushing. But right now you understand and you can smell and you say, something smells good around me. Somebody has so much to testify. And you look around your house and say, God, you did all this. This is you. The fragrance is coming out in Jesus' mighty name. The crushing is for a reason in Jesus' mighty name. My God. I track through the scriptures and I find that Joseph was a victim of envy. Joseph was a victim of jealousy. Joseph was thrown in a pit. Joseph was put in Potiphar's house and he faced allegations. Joseph was put in a prison during because of the false accusations. But he became, when he came out, he became somebody bigger. Somebody say, I'm coming out. I will be bigger. I'm coming out. I'm coming out bigger. I'm coming out. I'm somebody. Hallelujah. I know that they've made you feel like you are a nobody, but I want to tell you, you are somebody. Chido, you are somebody. You are coming out. When I trekked through the scriptures, I met a girl called Esther. And the Bible tells me that he had lost her father and he, had, he was living in a strange land as a slave. But out of it, she became a queen. Hallelujah. That shows me a God of turnaround, a God who takes the breaking points to make them a breakthrough point in Jesus' mighty name. He became a queen. She became the queen of the most powerful empire that existed at the time. Oh, I don't know who's tapping into the Esther anointing. I don't know who's tapping into the Joseph anointing. Where are you being squeezed? When I trekked through the scriptures, I encountered a man called Daniel. Daniel, a young man who was a slave in a foreign land. God bless you, ladies. God bless you, Sophie. Hallelujah. As a man in a, in a foreign land, he was a slave. Hallelujah. But he became an important person out of the pressure that he faced. None was more excellent. God bless you, short and spicy. God bless everybody who's giving. Thank you so much. God bless you and increase you. We may be in difficult pressures of times. You know, it's different times and seasons. Seasons change. You are not permanently in a challenging situation. No. There's moments of joy. There's moments where we learn certain things. Then God is taking through our experience room. Hallelujah. Yes. It might seem difficult. Yes. There might be seeming like there's no guarantees in the economy. Thank God you don't live in the economy of the world, but you live on the economy of the kingdom of God. And that's the economy you hold on to. Those are the only news that are more, more interesting. Those are the, when you live on the analysis of the economies of the kingdom of God, those are the ones that put ideas into you that will tell you where to invest. When the world is seemingly crashing, when the world is seemingly going through an economic crisis, God will open up your eyes to know where you buy shares so that when, when the season of the crashing is down, when, when, when the others are struggling to go up, your investment will yield a triple fold, a hundred fold return. Do you understand that 
not only because of your intellect, but God is able to show you and give you a strategy. I want you to understand that God can make you function in the secular world, but you function with an intelligence. You function with an intelligence. Um, I'm told that even the light bulb that we put on was developed by a Christian. So I'm saying you are not a useless person. I know they will tell you that you guys are focusing too much on the kingdom of God. You are not focusing on the things of the world. Mm -mm. Thank you. God bless you. But God is able to put innovative ideas that are going to change the world. You can be a trendsetter and be the best next thing. You're going to develop the next best, best thing. And we're going to patronize you. And while I'm at this point, if you're a Christian and you're not ashamed of being a Christian, we're going to patronize your business. We want to know about your business. Don't be ashamed of God. Christians, celebrate other Christians. Hallelujah. Celebrate and and, and tap into their, their businesses as well. Help another Christian to rise. We have to stand together. Announce yourself. And, and, and don't think we will not discern. Don't just say to us, oh, I'm a Christian, therefore patronize my business. No, we will know if you're faking it. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Go out, launch out, launch out, launch your business. Hallelujah. And serve God. God will bring the customers to you. May God give you amazing creative ideas. May people who are listening to the sound of my voice now go and be creative. May your creativity overflow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you go and represent us in government, in parliaments? They look down on us. We know they look down on us, but that does not shake us. You do double the trouble. You go the extra mile. You go for the cum laude. You show them. Who said just because I pray to God and, and because I, 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 I read the word, I'm a nobody? No, 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 no. Don't confirm. You don't know my book. You don't know the chapters in my book. You can be anybody. Those of you who need to go back to school to improve yourself, your skills, and your talents, you can go back and do that. Can I encourage somebody today? You can do that. You can do that and go beat them and... If, Beat them at their own game. The ones that they, it's not even their own game. My God. It's Jesus that is in charge. Go and show them that Christians can take over the world. My God. My God. You will receive dividends. Your dividends will be there. There's dividend for you having gone through the pressure and the crushing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oil is produced out of that pressure. The anointing of God is produced from the pressure that you have been going through. You're going to release. In times of pressure, you're going to release. My God. The Bible says in Judges chapter 14 that Samson was fighting. Hallelujah. There was a lion that came roaring towards him. And Samson, the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson and he tore that bear, that, that, that lion with his own hands. You don't have to be afraid. Attack that thing. That thing that they say, this nobody has ever solved it. Sit down and say, God, make me a solution. Give me the solution. Let me break this thing. I'm coming out with an answer for this thing. My God. He tore that lion as if he was tearing up a goat. He had nothing in his hand. He didn't have a weapon in his hand. Hmm. Although my father and mother might have abandoned me, yet the Lord will take me up and adopt me as his child. I want to encourage somebody who's here who's saying, Pastor Fortune, I'm so crushed. I don't even have a parents. I feel like I'm an orphan, but my parents are still alive. And I want you to stand on that word of Psalms 27, that the Lord has chosen to adopt you and you have a belonging in Jesus' mighty name. My God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw and the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. 
Be like David who dared to say, there is no giant that is going to bring me down. If God is God and God has called me and he has rescued me before, I have a CV, I have credentials, I have a precedent that tells me he, he took me out of the paws of the lion, he took me out of the paws of the bear. He will rescue me from this uncircumcised Philistine who is threatening the, the armies of the living God, who is threatening Israel. Therefore, I will not fear. I will face any giant and I will tear up that giant in Jesus' mighty name. My God. My God. One of my daughters came yesterday, just before we came, we went to church, one of my spiritual daughters, and she sat on this chair that I'm sitting on. And she said, yo, I don't want to sit too long on this chair because when I sit on this chair, there's something that I feel. I feel that I text. I said, this thing is too hot. I, Pastor, I thought I was ready. I said, you need to understand that when I sit here, I'm contending with a lot. The things that I, I've determined that I'm going to help others to, to deliver them for, they don't want, there are demons that don't want to let them loose. And you need to be ready. When you're going to answer the call of God, you need to understand that you need to be ready to contend. You need to be ready to fight. Come on, somebody. Somebody say it again in the comment section. I will not break. The spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David that day and he went forward. I will not break. Lady in red, the Lord has located you. He says you will not break. I will not break. Take advantage of the season of pressure that you are in because the fact that you are under pressure, that means you have something to produce. There is an oil that needs to flow from you. The fact that you are under pressure, it is because he wants to let you know that the anointing that is being squeezed out is an anointing like never before that you have experienced in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your life is about to be transformed. Hallelujah. He is refining you. Pressure is the, po is the point of refinement. It's a point of transformation. Somebody say, I'm being transformed. I'm being refined in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And all I know is that I will not break. I'm just being refined. I'm just being transformed. The spirit of the Lord, it says, when he has tried me, I will come forth and refined as gold. I will come forth refined as gold. I don't just wear the gold, but I'm going to be coming out refined. I'm gold myself. There's a secular song. I think it is Beverly Night. It says, I'm gold, baby. I am gold, baby. I think when they composed it, the lady was composing it for somebody who had just dumped them. I know you thought I don't know secular songs, right? But I love that song because the woman asserts, it says, I'm gold, baby. You don't know what you had until you lost it, but you will realize that you just lost gold. I'm gold. Can somebody declare, I am gold. You are gold. You are going to come out refined as gold. You are gold. So those who are rejecting you, those who are living your life, let them go because we don't want them. The more you go, the more you are squeezed, the more you are refined, the more your value goes up. And when they want to come back and they want to apologize, you say, sorry, I don't eat my vomit. I'm not a dog. I don't eat vomit. I'm gold. I've moved on. God has rebuilt me. I've moved on. You didn't realize what you had when you had me. My God. Anybody who does not honor you, anybody who does not respect you, it's not worth your time. You step on, you move on. When you step on, you move on, you are affirming that you know you are better. You are better. You can do better. People who get stuck in one position are people who are thinking they don't have options. But God wants you to know that you have options. My God. The value of your life can be upgraded when you are passing through pressure. You determine what you're going to do with the pressure that you're going through. Your value, the value of your life will be upgraded. Pressure will enhance your value. If you understand that the times of pressure... They maximize you. There are times of your maximization in Jesus' mighty name. You are going through an upgrading of destiny when you're going through pressure. Talk to me, somebody. You are coming out as gold. Somebody announced to somebody, I'm coming out as gold. God bless those who are giving. I'm coming out as gold. When you are going through pressure, you understand that you are birthing. It's a birthing experience. Your midwife is pushing you. 
when a, when, when a woman is pregnant and is giving birth, there's all sorts of contractions. Hallelujah. Your cervix is dilating. Hallelujah. God bless those who are giving you. God bless you and increase you. Amen. You, should, you will never know lack in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for loading God's storehouse. You will never know lack. I will keep on praying for you as well. Jesus, thank you. When a woman is giving birth, her uterus contracts and it's, it's combined. It's, there's a contraction and there's a, your cervix is dilated. And But what happens is that that whole contraction and that dilation is meant to give birth to a child. So whatever it is that you need to give birth to, you need to make sure that you understand and you feel this pain a little bit. You feel a pain, you feel a kick there. You say, mm, okay, God, we are about to birth it. I know it's the enemy that is throwing these things at me. And I'm not going to let go of this baby. I'm not going to miscarry. I'm going to give it birth in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Can a land be born in one day or can a nation be brought forth in a moment? As soon as Zion was in labor, she also brought forth her son. As soon as Zion traveled, he brought forth his son. As soon as God sh saw your tears, you're going to give birth to your son. You're going to give birth to your dreams. You're going to give birth to your business. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. My God. Jacob wrestled with an angel in Genesis chapter 32. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me because there was a transition. The angels were taking shifts. There are day angels and there are night angels. And the night angel was saying, I'm leaving. And, 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 and Jacob said, no, 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 no. You are not leaving until you bless me. I need people who are going to say, I will not break. I'm going to hold on to my angel. And you're going to make sure that you deliver exactly what you came from for. Because I'm not toiling another day. I'm not toiling another 12 hours. Karabashoto. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Is it stuck? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, I will not let you go until you bless me. Just hold on a second. For those of you on Mara Official, you will be with me just soon right now. I know that the screen froze. They are fixing it right now. Karabashota kadia mahasata. Thank you, Jesus. No, I'm not on mute, my angel. They're going to fix it just now. Somebody type, I will not break. I will not break. Thank you, Jesus. I will not let you go until you bless me. I'm asking the moderators to please make sure you're putting on my handle on TikTok, on Mara Official, so just in case any technical issues happen for them, that they can also come on the Fortunate Online broadcast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we back? Are we good, Norma? Are we good? Everybody can hear me. Benedette, you can hear me? Thank you, Jesus. I will not let you go until you bless me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are coming out in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to deal with those spiritual husbands and spiritual wives. Thank you so much, Lebo. God bless you. Hallelujah. When, when he had finished contending with the angel, he, he, he asked, he said, he said, what is your name? He said, Jacob, and, and the angel says, no, your name is no longer Jacob, but your name will now be called Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men, and you have prevailed. You must make up your mind, and you must make up the determination that I'm going to contend with my contenders until I come out as gold, and I'm going to come out on the other side. I have prevailed. Not only have I fought men, I have fought principalities, I have fought demons, and I have prevailed. Therefore, you are going to prevail. Somebody shout it to your neighbor and say, I have prevailed. And I will prevail. I have prevailed in Jesus' mighty name. In the midst of pressure, you are going to prevail. In the midst of pressure, you're going to give birth to a nation. In the midst of pressure, come on, somebody. You're going to become an Israel. Talk to me, somebody. In the midst of pressure, your multiple abilities are going to shine forth. God is going to show you that not only can you kill a lion, not only can you kill a bear, but you can kill an Egyptian. You can kill a giant. You can kill a Philistine. You can cross the Red Sea. You can come out on tops. You can shine on. You can lead a nation. You can be a king you can be a priest hallelujah you can do all things through christ who strengthens you come on somebody there is no such thing that i don't have a work-life balance come on somebody if god did not know that you can do it and you can carry it he would not have given it to you so i want to say to somebody who says pastor i feel like i'm crumbling there's so many things that are contending for me god is going to help you uh, help in time of need in the time of need he's going to help send you the help that you need 
O shataka na masoto kodiya basa, takadiya basa. Oh Jesus, in the midst of pressure, karaba shoto kodiya basa, takadiya ba. David says, why are you cast down, oh my soul? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil. Kariaba sonda, let that be your song. I will fear no evil. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Karaba shoto kodiya masata. I will fear no evil. My shakari ebesi. Whatever the pressure that Goliath tried to bring to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to talk you to talk to your soul and say, why are you cast down, oh my soul? You don't have to be depressed, my soul. The Lord is with me. Why are you cast down, my soul? Is it the pressure of the bills? Is it the pressure of the health? Is it the pressure of the business, the ministry? Come on, somebody. Mamush, here on this platform, we are empowering you. You're going to pray for yourself, my darling. As I declare this prophetic word over your life right now, I declare that you will not break. In fact, you will refire and you will, re, you will reinstate yourself onto the platform that God needs you to be in. You're going to pray. You're going to pray. You're going to pray. You're going to stand. We are standing together to pray with you so that you can bring forth as gold. You will not break. I decree and I declare that you will be sustained continually. Any, any contraction that you are, you are having right now, however powerful they seem to be, they are there for you to give a massive push because you, if it was just a small baby, it would not demand a powerful or a massive contraction. Therefore, you're going to have to give a massive push because what you're going to give birth is bigger than what you conceived, what you thought you had conceived because say, God says, I'm going to give you better than what you could ever conceptualize and what you could ever think of. Whatever you have not seen, you have not seen it before. Thank you, Jesus. Something is being born here this morning. Something is being born here this morning. Your content shall be revealed. What is inside of you? What is that talent? What is that breakthrough that you are carrying inside of you? What is that solution? What is that invention? What is that business idea? The content has to come out. Hallelujah. You are going, you are like a sponge. That is good. when you are pressing it, the oil is going to come out. That is how exactly how your prosperity is coming through. Whatever, uh, whatever the adversity, the extent of the adversity that you are going to through is the kind of adversity that is revealing your content. So if you're carrying something bigger inside of you, the level of adversity is what will show. The level of adversity that you're going through is what will squeeze out the best oil. Come on, somebody. Please make sure you follow me before we cut off. Hallelujah. And you turn on that notification bell. You can never be the same again. I can promise you this much. Your life will never be the same again. I've got the grace for it by the grace of the living God. I give glory to God for everything that he's using me for. Hallelujah. As a vessel, I know there is no way you will not make it in life. You will make it in life. You will make it. You will not break in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You are made of strong stuff. You are made of strong things. Hallelujah. The stuff that you are made of, the, 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 the intensity and, and the veracity of what you are made for, of, it's coming out. Hallelujah. It is because, God bless you, it's revealed by pressure. The reason why you are going through pressure, it is to reveal what you are made of. It is re to reveal what is in your content. Come on, somebody. It's in times of pressure that you really know who you are. It is in times of pressure that you really know what you actually believe in. Come on, somebody. God bless you, Poppy. My God, my God. What do you really stand for? My God, thank you, Jesus. Assuredly, I say unto you, before the rooster crows, you will deny me. This was Jesus saying to Peter and Peter saying, I, I, I won't deny you. I would even die with you. But Jesus proved to him and says, what do you actually stand for? What am I saying, saints? The spirit of the Lord says that don't waver between two beliefs. One minute you are with this God. One minute you are serving other gods. He's saying, what will you believe? Peter thought that he was believing in, in, in Christ. Hallelujah. But he's denied him three times and he remembered that this is what Jesus said to him he says you're gonna deny me you're gonna forget me because you're gonna be looking at other options you think that your friends are gonna bail you out of this thing ain't happening my God my God oh Jesus I decree that you will not break 
That's our prayer point. Is somebody hearing this? I said your breaking point is your breakthrough point. That is our, that is what we stand. Father, we will not break. We will not break. I will not break in the name of Jesus Christ. Lulu, you will not break. Samgela, you will not break. Brenda, you will not break. Your content is being revealed right now. People will know what you are made of. People will know what you are called for. Hallelujah. It's going to be revealed. Your character is going to be refined through these pressure moments. Hallelujah. Your character is being refined. Come on, somebody. The prodigal son left his father's house thinking that he was cute and all that. He went with his friends and he squandered the inheritance that he had. He went to squander the inheritance. He went to squander the money. And after the money had been squandered with women and, and alcohol and everything, and he saw that he was living like a pauper, he remembered that at home, even people who are servants, who are domestic workers, are eating better than him. He said, it's better than I go back. So his character needed to be refined. Some of you, you are going through seasons in your life right now because of the character that you have had and God wants to refine that character somebody God wants to refine that attitude that you have he wants to remove every negativity negative attitudes negative character he wants to refine you into the positive person that he brought you out to be hallelujah he's refining you as gold so that when you return your father is waiting with open arms some of you have have backslidden but God is saying I'm waiting with open arms to receive you and I'm saying to you I'm ready to take you back I'm ready to restore you to your rightful position I'm ready to give you every provision that you ever needed because you know you went to try the world and it didn't work for you you went to try the world and it didn't work for you I can tell you for sure it didn't work for you you tried smoking you thought it was cool it didn't work for you in, in fact you actually got sick when something doesn't want you it doesn't want you anymore and when you yield to God he will make sure that he makes you hate that thing. Even it will be like poison. There is no harm. Those of you who are going through challenges and you, you know somebody has got an addiction in your family, make it a prayer point. Father, let, if that person tries to do that thing again, let it be like poison in their mouth. Let them spit it out. I'm not talking theory here. Your body is the temple of the living God. You're not going to contaminate it. He's going to reject it. It's going to reject it. Don't wait until it rejects you and, 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 and gives you a, a, a cirrhosis of the liver. Don't wait until they tell you that you, you have burned your, your liver to an extent that, you know, all the alcohol that you have taken have now damaged your liver. The road of correction. Let me not go there because I know some people don't want to be corrected. God wants to refine you. God wants to realign you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in, in my closing, what do we do? Pastor, what, what must I do? What must I do in times of pressure? When you're going through times of pressure, those are your prayer times. You need to pray even more. Somebody say, I will pray. I will pray. Hallelujah. There's a song that says, I think it's Ebuka songs. He says, if I don't pray, Satan will make a mess of me. I will pray. I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make a mess of me. You see, at the time, when you're going through that moment, and you're thinking you're having fun, and, and the devil is busy pulling you in his direction, he gives you all these things, and you're saying, I'm living the soft life I'm enjoying. It's that same thing that's going to kill you. At one point, it's the one that's going to reverse and kill you. So what do you do when you're going through pressure times? Those are your prayer times. Those are the times that you say, this thing does not go out except by prayer and fasting. You've gone around this mountain too long. I'm going to go and, and commit myself to prayer. I will not let you go until you bless me. Jacob knew better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer times. When you're confronted with a death sentence, prayer times, maximum prayer response on every pressure from the devil that you're getting, maximum prayer on, on your family. I've seen mothers who have turned around on my, in, in my sight. Let me tell you the kind of person I am, the kind of person that I empower for all the students that sit under me. I, when I'm not there, 
the child was having a headache that we could see it was a it was an evil headache i did not even have to say and the mother woke up and said my child will not die my child will not go through do you understand you need massive maximum prayer maximum push you have that ability inside of you i want to tell you you have that ability you don't even have to hear me first saying it mm -mm. i can stand in agreement with you but your words carry power on your children you need to speak to your, to those children speak to those books touch those books they are exposed to all sorts of evil incantations evil satanic agents out there touch the books when they come back from school take that school back and you pray for it take those papers and say i declare you are covered by the blood of jesus christ my child will prosper when they look at these books no witchcraft no enchantment shall come upon my child in the mighty name of jesus christ do you understand that it's a battlefield out there you're gonna have to fight jesus let me close father i thank you oh jesus when you're going through pressure times those are thinking times give me five minutes i close when you are going through pressure, those are the times when you are thinking a lot. You are planning. Hallelujah. The prodigal son, the Bible says he came to himself. That means he was sitting, he was strategizing, he was planning. He said he came to himself. He knew that this is a mess. This is nonsense that I'm not supposed to be stuck in. Let me re-strategize. How am I going back? How am I going back home? Times of pressure. Some of you have put yourself in pressure because you went and signed loans that you were not supposed to sign for. You signed up for houses that you could not afford. You bought cars that you could not afford. There is no harm in downgrading and going back home and telling your parents, you know what? I went ahead of myself. Please, can I come back and recuperate and regroup myself? Am I talking to somebody? There is no harm. There's no shame. Don't care about what your friends are going to say. When you downgrade from that BMW to that Golf, no, don't care. If you downgrade to a Yaris, you know what you're doing. You're going to come back. There's a comeback. There's a comeback season. Don't stress. Let's go and refix your situation. Let's go fix your finances. You will come back. And when you come back, you buy a nice car, bigger car, more expensive, and you know that you're not buying it on debt because now you know how to manage your finances better. And they said we don't teach financial management in church. Hallelujah. Jesus is on the throne. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the one. When you're going through adversity, you go through an impartation of a re-strategization of your mentality, your wisdom. Say, God, activate that wisdom inside of me. This adversity must produce wisdom inside of me. When you go through pressure, you settle down. You don't have any regrets. Go back to the drawing board. Pressure times are times of, of praising God. You have to praise God even more. When you're going through pressure, the enemy does not understand why you are dancing around and you are rejoicing. Don't fight the person who's trying to take your spouse away. Mm -mm. Let them rejoice. The best, you send confusion to the enemy's camp. They don't understand that you are silent. Don't give them the benefit of nagging. Don't give them the benefit of shouting back at them. Leave my husband alone. No. Let them rejoice when they see you. In fact, on your status on Facebook and say, oh, my husband, I love my husband so much. I love the way my husband gives me massages every time he comes back from work. Is that not going to send confusion in the enemy's camp? Am I communicating? Am I helping somebody this morning? And you rejoice and say, thank God, my God has come through for me. My life is back to normal. My, my husband, the unity in my house. I want to thank God for the unity and the love and the peace in my heart, in, in my house. Don't go on your status and rubbish your status. And you want to go complain on your status for what? To, to make the enemy rejoice. No, 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 no. Whatever it is that is going on, we fix it in the bedroom. We fix it on our knees. We fix it in our prayer closet. And we praise God. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. My husband is back home. God, I thank you, Lord, that my children are provided for. God, I thank you that this illness has gone out in Jesus' mighty name. Then the wicked ones, the witches, they, they don't understand. 
Somebody say, I'm going to praise him in advance. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I'm going to praise him in advance in Jesus' mighty name. This is not a time to murmur. This is not a time to grumble. It's a time to thank God for life. It's a time to thank God for health. It's a time to thank God for sustaining, sustaining you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God I'm alive. Thank God for good health. Thank God that you have sustained me till this far, Lord. Thank God that I did not have to die in that situation. Thank God I did not have to die in that relationship. In Jesus' mighty name. Don't let anybody tell you more than once that they don't want you. You're better than that. If they don't want you, say, okay, bye. Bye. Jesus. When you, are, when you are going through your pressure moment, it's time for you to be persistent. You don't let go. You are consistent and you hold on to God. Pressure times are times when you refuse to give up. There are times when you receive, you, you refuse. You say, I will not give out. I will not give up. I will not give in. Hallelujah. It's not a time to call a whimper. You are not a wimp. It's not a time for you to, to, to say, I, 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 it's my sickness. My, it, why are you saying it's your sickness? It's not your sickness. That sickness must come out. You command it to go out. It's not your sickness. You tell that sickness, you're not going to see the end of me. I'm going to see the end of you. In this living age, I will not see my... I will not end. You will end in Jesus' mighty name. Job 14, 14, he says, If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my, of my hard service, I will wait till my change comes. You wait on God until your change comes. You wait on God until your change comes. Talk to me, somebody. Stay in the process. It's not time to break. Tell your neighbor, it's not time to break. I will not break. Stay in the process. What God is processing you through, what God is fixing, stay in the process. Hallelujah. I will not break. Hallelujah. Gold is refined, not halfway, but all the way. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency may be of God and the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed and troubled on every side. We are, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. My God, we are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. We are struck down, but we are not destroyed. Always caring about in us, in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. The life of Jesus is manifested in your body. That means his resurrection is manifested in your body as well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and show that in this season of pressure whatever moment of pressure you find yourself in you will pray and you will plan and you will praise and you will persist you will persist somebody say I will be persistent I will always be praising I will be planning to with God all the time I will continue to pray I will plan I will praise and I will persist in the name of Jesus Christ I'm coming out of this season in the name of Jesus Christ and as I'm coming out I'm not coming out on the same level I'm coming out on a higher dimension. I will not break in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, you brought out Job in times of trouble. You gave him double for his trouble in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you took Daniel out of, of, of his times of trouble. Father, he came out being more prosperous in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, as I close right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for everybody who's at the sound of my voice. Lord, I declare, Lord, that we lift up your name in praise right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we declare your awesomeness in Jesus' name. Father, we have come to you this morning, tonight, depending on wherever they are listening to me from, in the name of Jesus Christ. We came to seek solace and comfort and protection in you, O God. And we live this broadcast, mighty God, knowing that we are protected and we will not break, we will not scatter, we will not shatter. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God, we declare confidently that with men it is impossible, but God is possible with you, Father God. We believe in your possibilities as life is happening all around us, Father God. We decree and we declare we shall not be consumed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we choose to rely in the refuge. You are our refuge and you are our strength, oh God. We are covered. We are coming out of this season not the same way we came in, Father God. As I release everybody into their days, into their evenings, my God, as they go home, Father God, may they also lay hands on their children, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and also impart with them, oh 
oh God, uh, that anointing of that, that they will not break in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, they have reached their breakthrough point. Uh, their breaking point has become their breakthrough point uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, uh, they will think and they are receiving the grace to think and plan and persist uh, in the way that you want them to in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, I prophetically declare that all things are uh, in all these things that they are going through, my God, uh, they are more than conquerors through Christ who loves them, my God, uh, in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for that person who is still putting that prayer request and saying that God my God pastor pray for me I have prayed for you I'm saying that in all these things you are more than a conqueror in Jesus mighty name I prophesy to you that I declare that supernatural supplies are coming to your household in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in this week you will experience supernatural provision in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare that there shall be an, an immediate and an instant and urgent solution to all your problems and all the things that have been putting you under pressure in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that you will receive the fresh help and the mercy of God and grace shall be released upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I wish somebody could type a believing amen. I wish your amen could thunder well. I wish you could remove your focus on the thing that has been putting you under pressure and you say amen when you say amen and say so shall it be. I tap into it. I agree with it. It shall so be in Jesus mighty name. Come on somebody. I curse every demon of fear. I curse every demon of trepidation in your life. I curse every demon of panic in your life. You shall not panic. You shall not shake in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help from above is being released upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare you, whatever attack that you will come upon you, up upon you, whatever is trying to stress your body in Jesus mighty name, I declare that the strength is returning to you in your body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has weakened your immune system, Father God, you are releasing that strength again, my God. Your immune system is no longer weak, is strengthened in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This week shall be filled with days that are stress-free in Jesus' mighty name before because, God, we bear upon our bodies the mark that says we belong to Jesus. Therefore, we declare that as we belong to Jesus, my God, we shall be stress-free in Jesus' mighty name. We are empowered, oh God. I decree and I declare as you're stepping into this week, you are empowered with the ability to cope well under any form of pressure that they may bring in you, even in your workplace, even if the deadlines are very tight in Jesus' mighty name, you will not buckle under the pressure points that the devil is bringing your way, but you will rise with strength and you will rise with power and might through Christ who strengthens you in Jesus' mighty name. You have been not been given the spirit of fear, but you have been given the spirit of a sound mind and of love in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare that stress will not overcome your mind in Jesus' mighty name. I speak to those of you on Facebook and on YouTube. I speak to those of you on TikTok, I say you have a sound mind and the spirit of fear shall not overwhelm you and they shall not overcome you in Jesus' mighty name. You may be pressed on every side, but I decree and I declare that you will not be crushed. Somebody sound, sound that crushing again with me on the comment section and you declare I will not be crushed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree that you will not be perplexed. Nothing is going to catch you by surprise. You will not be in despair. You will not be persecuted in Jesus' mighty name. You, know, you will always remember that you will never be forsaken. You will never be struck down in Jesus' mighty name. I decree you will not be destroyed. You will rise above every challenge in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus. You are coming out of that stressful situation with your mind intact. I come against the spirit of depression. I speak to your mental health right now. You are coming out with your mind intact. You are not going to lose your mind. Somebody needs to comment in that comment section and say, I will not lose your mind. I need to correct certain speeches, certain tongues, certain death that has been going out of some people's mouth. You have been saying, I feel like I'm losing my mind. The Lord says you need to cancel it right now and say, I will not lose my mind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever pressure situation that you have been in, my God, the Lord is going to help you bear the fruits of your perception perseverance as you are persevering you are not giving up you are going to be persistent you will not fear in Jesus mighty name this journey is going to be a sweet journey come on somebody shout perfection July is my month of perfection in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that the peace that surpasses all understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hold on for me a second hallelujah let me get back the people on Facebook and on YouTube right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ 
Shete Kiriaba, Rosando di Amasanda, Marco di Amasanda. In this season, you will not pay attention to any form of distraction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will not be distracted by any of the devil's devices in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree that the devil shall not overpower you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The peace that is going to restore you, you will dwell in peace all the days of our lives. Goodness and mercy are going to be your friend throughout the month of July and in this week. My God, may you show them mercy, those who are going for court proceedings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for that gentleman that is going for a, a, a disciplinary hearing tomorrow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak mercy, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak a nullification of every evidence that they have gathered against him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He's the righteousness of God. Father God, we beg for pardon in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God, your peace is being restored in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that the peace of God which transcends all understanding will continue to guard your heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Those of you who are still waiting for me to say I prophesy, I've been prophesying all this while. I need you to take possession of the things that you came here believing for in Jesus' mighty name. I need to see you shouting that amen. Well, don't miss your moment. Don't be distracted. Be doing something else and your mind is somewhere else. Whereas the spirit of the Lord is busy saying something right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I restore. I decree and I declare that your hope is being restored. You are being welling up with hope inside of your spirit, man. The Lord is renewing your strength. The Lord is renewing your hope in Jesus' mighty name. When anything will come your way to give you stress in this week, you will soar on wings like an eagle over it in Jesus' mighty name. You will run and not grow weary in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that you will not faint in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Holy Spirit. Now may the Lord of peace of God, the, the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for using me as a vessel to deliver this message to your children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree that they are empowered in Jesus' mighty name. They are empowered and they are winning in all sides in Jesus' mighty name. God bless everybody who is on Facebook and on YouTube. God bless you. I hope that you did not lose the feed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I thank you. I thank you. I give you all the glory and adoration, my God. Every testimony, our Lord, I lift it up and I give it up to you, O God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for every prophetic word that has gone forth this morning. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they have appropriated it, they've taken it, and they're going to water it, oh my God, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. YouTube, can you give me a resounding amen so that I know that you are still with me in Jesus' name? Rashoto Kodia Mahasa Takadia. I pray for you, Zoda Magwaza, in Jesus' mighty name. Linda Zimba, I pray for you. Amora Kish, I pray for you in Jesus' mighty name. You are free in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much, YouTube. Thank you for confirming. You are on. Can you see me? All right. All right. Awesome. Good stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I thank you for Peter. Thank you, Lord, for everybody that has followed this family, oh God, that has become part of this family. Thank you, Lord, for everybody that has gifted. Father God, I speak to their finances. Father God, I command an increase. I command an overflow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that every form of challenges that they're going through, Father God, you have lifted them out of it. They, Lord, that the pressure has been removed in Jesus. Jesus mighty name. I give you praise and adoration. I glorify you, Holy Spirit. Those of you on Facebook and on YouTube, remember to like the video that you've just watched and you can go and watch the other videos as well and like them as well. God bless you. Thank you so much. Please make sure you are following me on YouTube and on Facebook as well and all the social media channels and please come and follow me on TikTok. Um, those of you on Facebook, I'm just giving you a heads up. We will be removing some of the footages on Facebook because we want you to come to YouTube for the replays as well. Okay. So because we know that sometimes some of, uh, you know, th there's not a lot of people that are that might still be using Facebook. So we want to see you on YouTube as well. We want to see you on TikTok very much. So if you want to watch any uh, rebroadcast, you can go to my YouTube. My YouTube is under my profile, Pastor Fortune L online. Under Pastor Fortune, when you click on that, um, um, 
name at the top you click on it there's a youtube link those of you on my official you click on the profile there's a youtube link you go to that youtube i, we, I also upload my videos there as well okay so if you want to communicate with me you can send me an inbox on tiktok on uh instagram uh also on 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 facebook as well um please make sure you identify yourself give me your name and surname and tell me that you are from my tiktok broadcast you're part of the family you're following me and you can send in your prayer requests uh you can send in your whatsapp number um that you want to be on um our whatsapp group you can send in your emails as well so that we have contact and communication and we can notify you of other programs that we do outside of tiktok and you will be blessed and you will grow i have no doubt very soon we're going to be starting the school of the spirit um then we're going to be teaching you those of you who want to uh, flow in the prophetic those of you who want to interpret dreams those of you who want to grow spiritually even just you know not that you want to be a pastor or a prophet or anything else but you just want to grow spiritually so you send us the information make sure you join my whatsapp group the whatsapp group is in a video it's in a barcode you scan the barcode and you are in the whatsapp group if you cannot you don't know how to use the barcode you can always send me a message with your whatsapp number and your email address as well please those of you who are sending me if you're asking me a question about a dream interpretation i'm kindly requesting that you give me as much detail as possible explain every surrounding because every element of the dream makes a difference you don't just say i dreamed being short or i dreamed being rather explain to me what was the circumstances how did you feel what did you see what else was in the surrounding so give me as much detail as possible you will understand those of you who are students in the school of the spirit will get to understand why those things why those elements are important and how how they all come together okay so i'm just saying thank you so much i will see you tomorrow again at 5 a.m i'm back together at 5 a again tomorrow at 5 a.m and at 10 p.m every single day of the week six days a week um apostle mara is at 10 p.m so apostle mara comes on at 10 p.m with teaching i'm here at 5 a.m every single day of the week and on fridays we have our fasting and we have our 12 midnight so on fridays we don't have a 10 o'clock we have fasting from uh, sorry we have prayers from 12 till 3 3 a.m and then we have another prayer at 5 a.m on saturdays and sometimes we do go to four o'clock but we just go as the spirit of the lord leads thank you so much god bless you darlings i love you so much go out and conquer and go out and execute execute with excellence and represent god in everything you do even in your workplaces don't be late for any reason god bless you near fifi thank you so much that you have found a home those of you who are not in any church whatsoever you're welcome to fellowship with us this is your platform this is where you will grow and we are here for you okay so we will we will do our best to give you direction as much as possible there is no distance in in the holy spirit there is no distance in the spirit we can reach you so if you are growing give me a testimony send me those testimonies make sure you are putting it on the comment section i am gonna go i see some people are also putting prayer requests on the test on, on the videos the pin videos but also send me an inbox hallelujah so that i can answer i will also answer with uh, I'll, I'll try this answering with the videos as well but thank you so much god bless uh mom chido thank you so much thank you for everybody who's been praying for me as well god bless you youtube and facebook i love you so much see you tomorrow at five and don't forget the session with apostle at 10 and as you come in you can make sure you come in and you 